All right, handsome. Hooch, what are you looking for, baby? Hmm? Are you looking? See, I told you. See, he's playing right now. Hi, guys, and welcome back to the channel. Um, today we have a special treat. My best friend um, makes cinnamon rolls typically for Christmas for all of us, but she needs to make a batch and everybody always asks for her recipe. So today we're going to show you how she makes her cinnamon rolls. I'm Dawn and I'm living the Nukem life. And this is Trisha, my best friend. She is going to make our cinnamon rolls for us today. All right, friends. So here is the secret ingredient to my cinnamon rolls. It is potatoes. <laughs> um, so what I do, you need a cup of potatoes per batch of, uh, baked potato per batch of cinnamon rolls. So I simply wash the scrub the skin really well. And then I poke it with the fork because we don't want it exploding in the microwave. Um, if you wanted to invest time and actually bake it in the oven, I think that's fine too. Uh, but this works in about five minutes. Um, and we get, um, like I said, we're going for a cup of mashed potatoes. I'll show you how that works after they come out of the microwave. <laughs> the puppies are having a good time. So while the potatoes are baking, I'm gonna prep my flour. Um, so we are over four cups of flour for this recipe in total, um, but I am going to just start with a cup and a half. Now, I know there's much debate about baking and whether you press your flour into your cup or you weigh it or whatever. I just lightly scoop it and then take a knife and brush it off. Um, that's as detailed as I get on that. Not very scientific, I know. Hopefully not too much compression. But I put in, um, like I said, a cup and a half to get us started. That cup and a half is in there and then I add the yeast. <laughs> New puppies. All right. The second thing I do is in a saucepan, I am going to heat the sugar, butter, milk, and mashed potatoes when they're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep this so that all I need to do is add the mashed potatoes. So this mixture calls for a third of a cup of um, sugar, granulated sugar. Now, um, because we're feeding the yeast, we want to make sure that we're using real sugar for this. Uh, my understanding is that the yeast will cook off or take care of all the sugar molecules, so you're not really uh, ingesting those, those carbs. I'm going to give you other carbs, like potato and flour. Just a minute. Okay, it's a third of a cup of sugar. It is one teaspoon of uh, salt. Now this is a third of a cup of butter. And I like to chop it up into little cubes just for when I'm heating it, it disperses better um, and really helps me gauge if I've hit the temperature. The only thing is that uh, a third of a cup is, you know, not really on the basic measurements, but we'll make it work. So you can see it's just little, I don't know if you call butter bite size, but little bite sized chunks of butter. Um, like I said, it just disperses it in the pan a little more evenly and um, helps with the melts.
Now, as Dawn indicated, this is usually my Christmas gift. Everybody else does cookies or, you know, chocolate candies and stuff like that. So I make these fresh the week before, two, three days. It just depends. Sometimes on Christmas Eve, I'm scrambling because I, I have been known to do as many as 12 batches. Um, so it does take some time. Um, so I am going to show you how to prep uh, the containers these freeze really well especially if you're only going for about a week I would not suggest freezing for more than about 14 days um, just the elasticity the, the gluten part of the flour and stuff starts to break down in the freezer okay so two out of our three potatoes are done they're nice and squishy I can tell they're cooked through so I just cut them in half as I mentioned we're going for a cup of mashed potatoes so unlike making mashed potatoes for dinner you know you don't need to peel it all out and mash it all up I just take a fork like this and um, scrape it like that and you can see that it goes all soft and scoop it into my measuring cup Yep, so we're right at a potato and a half for a cup. And that goes in here. And this goes on the stove. All right, so we have it mixing here and we want it to get between 120 and 130 degrees. Um, I have a radar gun style um, temperature gauge that I use. Um, if you have a candy thermometer, you could use that. I'll be honest with you, sometimes I don't want to deal with it either. Um, so what I look for is just the butter start to melt and little bubbles um, to come up around the side of the pan. Um, but you want to cut it off quickly because if you get this too hot, it will actually kill your yeast instead of um, feeding your yeast. So it, this is probably the trickiest part um, about making the cinnamon rolls if you want them nice and fluffy. Like I indicated, this is where I cut the butter into chunks so it's nice and spread out. Um, and as it starts to melt, it can, it gives me that indication that we're approaching the temperature that I want it at. So you can see here where it's just starting to have a little bit of bubble and boil there and the butter is nice and melty. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. So what we're going to do next, um, now that this is nice and hot, I just give it a little stir. I wanna make sure I'm getting the sugar off the bottom before I put it into my pan because again, uh, that sugar is what we're really going for to um, feed the yeast. Again, in this bowl is a cup and a half of flour and one packet of active dry yeast. So again, I wanna make sure I'm getting all that sugar that's kind of stuck to the bottom there out and into the pan. I start with my batter stir here. Again, you can do this with just a regular wooden spoon and spatula if you want. Uh, my carpal tunnel does not appreciate that, especially when you're doing multiple batches. So I use these um, and you just get it started. So this goes for about three minutes. Now, while that gets started, I also am going to be adding two eggs to this. So I crack my eggs into a bowl to make sure that I'm not getting um, shells into my batter. Now that this is nice and combined, I'm going to go ahead and add one egg at a time.
I'm gonna take a quick minute just to scrape to make sure that I don't have any flowers still stuck on the side in a clump and also in the bottom of the mixer bowl. And then we're going to start adding um, the next amount of flour. So we are going anywhere from four and a quarter cups to four and three quarters cup of flour into this mix. Um, so I have a cup and a half in there now and um, I'm going to add another half a cup, which will put us at two. Now actually, also, this is where I switch. This is a bread hook. Um, so since we're gonna be adding all this flour and basically making bread, um, this is the point at which I switch that. Once that kind of starts to incorporate, um, I just gradually keep adding. I don't actually turn this off. It can be a little messy sometimes. So that's two and a half cups. That's three cups. And then I'm just knocking that flour down so it can get caught up into the dough. So this is three and a half cups. You can see that the dough is really starting to come together and this is where it starts to um, spit out some of the dough because it's not as wet and absorbing that flour so much. Um, we're gonna go for a fourth cup and I'm gonna slow this down just a little bit. So that half makes us, uh, puts it at four. So I really wanna see how this incorporates before I decide how much more I wanna add. Now remember that in, the, in a few minutes, we're gonna be kneading the flour. So we're gonna have more flour on our surface, which also gets incorporated into the dough. So that's why you have that variance between four and a quarter and four and three quarters. Um, because you're going to be adding flour to it as you go through this process. Now it's still pretty sticky in there. Um, it hasn't uh, really come into a whole bowl uh, of flour, so I'm gonna go for a quarter cup. And again, what I'm looking for is just a single consistent smooth ball of uh, bread dough here. All right, that is pretty good. There's still a little bit there on the bottom. I think that's pretty close. All right, I'm gonna call that good. And we bring out this lovely dough. Now, this is a little gooey, so I probably could have done just a little bit more flour um, in this bowl, but like I said, we're gonna be adding flour as we go through this process so it just means sticky hands for a little bit. If you don't like sticky hands, then you might add a little flour earlier. And then we're just gonna work it for a little bit. Now you can see, again, I have some on my fingers because um, it was a little wetter than it probably should have been. I just rolling that back into the dough. It'll work itself back in. Yeah. 
What you're going for again is a nice smooth surface. Um, you can see how, I'll say, how much more drier it is now than it was when I took it out of the bowl and that's kind of what we're going for. So you really only need to knead it for two, three minutes um, as long as you've got a good amount of flour on your table. So now I do need to prep my bowl for letting it rise. Okay, so to uh, let your, your dough rise, you're gonna want a nice big bowl. Um, and then you just want to coat it in a little bit of vegetable oil. Again, I think vegetable oil of your choice, but I probably wouldn't go for stuff like olive oil and things that have a strong flavor, because it will transfer. Um, again, just a little vegetable oil and a cloth, paper towel, whatever to rub it around. This is mostly so that the dough doesn't stick as it dries out and rises. Then this lovely, man, that looks really good. That little ball of dough will go in here and we'll cover it with any old kind of towel, dish towel, whatever. And you could probably even do paper towels. You just uh, cover that and we'll let it set for 45 minutes to 60 minutes. You want it to double in size. So if you heard the two little dogs wrestling around earlier in the video, this is the little angels that were wrestling around. <laughs> Do you see how cute they are? They're brand new. All right, so now we're gonna do the icing. Two tablespoons of butter. Again, I'm just using the Blue Bonnet, any kind of butter that you wanna use, your favorite, your preference is all good. And then we're gonna add cream cheese. It is looking for three ounces of cream cheese. I swear by, now I tell you any kind of butter you want, but when it comes to cream cheese, you need fill it up. You need to pay for the extra, get it fat. Don't get that low, whatever, fat stuff. No, 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 go for the good stuff. So um, I make these at Christmas time a lot. I don't know why sugar cookie recipes, frosting, whatever, uh, cream cheese seems to go like crazy. So it's always a little bit hard to find, but um, three ounces of the good stuff. Is it refrigerated or room temperature? Um, you want it soft, both of them soft. So usually what I do is I take out my butter and my cream cheese and all that. And so sitting on the counter as I'm prepping everything else, you know, the cinnamon rolls take an hour or so to rise and everything. So that gives them time to come up to room temperature and be soft. Um, so I start with that. I have uh, switched over to my hand blender. Again, you could, I have a whisk so I could use it in my mixer as well. I just like the control of this a little bit more. Um, and then you just want to mix the cream cheese and the butter together. So it's really quick like that. You just want to incorporate it so it looks like one mass of stuff. Then we're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I'm gonna go ahead and incorporate that as well. And then we're gonna to start to add powdered sugar. All right, from a powdered sugar perspective, it is two and a half cups. I do not recommend that you add two and a half cups to the bowl and just start blending because you'll make a mess. I am less uh, precise with my powdered sugar because, you know, you can never have enough sugar um, than I am with my flour. We're not baking here. We don't need uh, as accurate ingredients. So this is a cup and already I got it all over myself. I wore black today. That was bright, right? Um, so just again, you want to be careful because you're going to get it all over the place. And you just start to incorporate. You 
can see it's really starting to tighten up there. Here, I'm actually only gonna do one at a time um, as we go up to the two cups. Again, because it's so tight, you don't want powdered sugar everywhere. So I don't know the science behind all this, but you can see that the, the powdered sugar and the butter are really starting to become this um, creamy texture. Um, it, it's going to become a lot looser can, um, texture, I guess, you know, for the, the frosting the piece. Melting. Yeah, because it's not... Um, it's not frosting like, you know, that has a nice form buttercream you're putting on cupcakes, right? This is a nice, loose, uh, fluid uh, frosting that we're going for. Yeah. But I am going to add a little bit of milk after we get all the sugar in here. So that could, but it's really minimal, like teaspoons and tablespoons of milk. All right, so that is two, what well, it looks like at two cups. We got one more cup to add here. Now I will tell you also is, um, as I mentioned, I make a lot of batches at Christmas time. When it comes to the frosting, I only make one batch of frosting at a time. I don't, you know, add a whole bunch. Um, I don't know why, I, it's just a little more problematic getting the texture and consistency as you increase the size of the um, batch. All right, so I eyeball this. Um, it indicates you should add about um, a teaspoon at a time until it gets to the consistency you want. Um, I just kind of eyeball it. So I probably do about two teaspoons to get started. Again, just a little bit there in the bottom. It does not take much. Okay, that's still a little thick. Now again, if you like thick frosting, you can totally leave it at this consistency. Um, it will melt onto your warm gooey cinnamon rolls anyway, so it's completely up to you. I like to, um, because of the way I'm gonna show you guys to give it as a gift, package it for gifting, um, I like it a little bit looser so it can squeeze out of the bag. is right about where I do it. All right. Um, so this is a snack bag because I don't have any regular size sandwich Ziploc baggies. But this is what I do, again, when I'm gift giving, is to take a Ziploc baggie. I put my hand here like this, and it's really hard with a snack bag here. Um, and then just scoop in the frosting. So what I put in the instructions then is to just snip off this end and squeeze the icing out onto your warm, gooey cinnamon rolls. It's pretty easy. Like I said, this works a little bit better when you have regular sandwich size of blocks, but that is how we prep the frosting to go with the cinnamon rolls. All right, so we're looking for the dough to be double in size from when we put it into the bowl. Looks beautiful. That one did rise really well, which means I did not get the, the um, stove mixture too hot. If it doesn't double in size, you're, you, 
are highly likely to have gotten too hot on your temperature and killed your yeast. So here is really simple. Um, we're just going to punch it down. You want to get some of that air out. Um, again, I floured the surface because I don't want it to stick. It is going to sit here for just a little bit. And I'm going to cover it again and it's going to get 10 more minutes to rise before we move to the next part. We uh, punched it down and we let it set for 10 minutes. Before I get to that, I'm going to go ahead and mix up our filling, which is brown sugar, cinnamon, and butter. So what you want is a half a cup of packed brown sugar. And then a tablespoon of cinnamon. So it's a lot of cinnamon. And then you want a half a stick or a quarter cup of butter. That doesn't go in the bowl. It's just... Right. We'll smear, smear the butter on. Again, it's been sitting at room temperature, so it's pretty soft. Okay. And here is our lovely dough. I've still got some flour out. Like I said, you always going to have a little extra. I'm going to spread that out as we get started put a little on my rolling pin here and then we're going to start to roll this out so again i'm not a professional with this i just kind of get it started in this nice rectangular shape and then i start to roll it out now for me cinnamon rolls the best part is the bread i love the bread and when Dawn goes on her low carb and she isn't doing that much bread, the gluten in bread is the best thing ever. Uh, when you're rolling out cinnamon rolls, this becomes really time consuming because that gluten stretches out and then contracts and expands. So this takes a little bit of time. Um, and it's really up to you on how thin you want your cinnamon rolls to be in the layers. So some people like it really thin so that you have a lot of spirals with the cinnamon and the butter. I'm kind of a medium kind of girl because like I said, I really love the bread part. So I am trying to get it to stay kind of in this rectangular shape. This one is actually doing really well for me playing to the camera, I think, so. <laughs> Got some nice air pockets in here. This is gonna, this is gonna puff up really nice in the um, oven. All right, so that is about the, um, the depth that I like it, again, this is really a preference thing. If you like a nice thick bread in, in your rolls, then you wanna go a little thicker. If you like it really thin and lots of spirals, you can go a little bit thinner. Uh, and Dawn, you should get a, see if you can come in and see the picture. You can see the uh, potato in here, right? I mashed it, it's not a perfect match. You can see the little pieces of potato in here. When this bakes up, you will never ever realize there's potato in here. Okay, so next is uh, the quarter cup of butter. This is how I like to do it. Again, I do things with my hands. You could potentially uh, melt the butter and brush it on if you're picky. Um, I literally smear it on with my hands like this. <laughs> So, um, here we go. It'll stick even better. All right, and then we start rolling. Now you can roll away from you, you can roll towards you any way you want. Just kind of start coaxing it. 
Now again, this is where it's important to make sure that you have flowered your surface right so that it's not sticking, um, that it's just coming right up. See, I got a little sticky there. All right, then I do this little thing where I kind of push it back together because I've stretched it out quite a bit um, in my prep work. All right, then we'll get a knife. All right, so I just take a regular knife Again, a little bit of flour here and I go right in half and then in half again and then in half again all right so at this point I have eight and I can tell you if you like a big, huge cinnamon roll, um, you can stop here. But I just proportionally with cinnamon roll and frosting and bread and the, the fact that these are going to double, if not more, in size, I actually cut them down again. So I go into every uh, piece here and cut them in half. Okay, and that gives us 16 cinnamon rolls. Now, I will tell you that generally speaking, because I make these for gifts, these two end pieces generally go to a badge that stays at home, <laughs> so no one sees it. Um, I like to use the foil because, again, I'm giving this as a gift. People can bake it, then they can just throw this away or recycle it, right? They don't have to clean any of their own pots and pans. They don't have to transfer. Uh, from a plastic container into a baking dish um, They don't have to have a baking dish if they you know are one of our 20 somethings that haven't have just moved into their own place So a bunch of options there. Um, so similar to the bowl for rising I'm gonna put some vegetable oil in here and rub it around so that they don't stick to this pan Again, you don't want a heavy, um, which I just put a heavy in there, um, but your, your paper towel will rescue you from that. And the nice thing about the paper towel is I'm gonna soak this up for this particular pan, and then um, I don't have to pour anything in this one. I can just rub it in there and we're all good to go. And I've got two pans out of that, possibly even a third. Then, um, I start to separate so you can see that loveliness right there again I'm giving it as gifts so I want to be able to see the filling on both sides um, and then we just place them in our pan now again I give these as gifts it depends on how many people are in that household as to how many cinnamon rolls they actually get um, so when you put these in the pan you kind of want so the seam to uh, be pointed to each other or towards the back of the pan, right? You don't wanna leave the seam kind of open in this space. So as they rise and bake, um, they push up against something and stay closed. You may find that a little bit of filling hits the uh, counter. So all you do is kind of Brush that over the top and pick up those yummy bits. <laughs> All right, so this is my first pan. Now you can see in this pan, I could probably fit a sixth one here in the middle. Just know that the more that you cram into this pan, the less room they have to grow. And these, um, similar to I showed you in the bowl, them doubling in size, they will actually double in size here as well. So I'm gonna put the caps on these and I'm gonna actually put them in the freezer to stop the uh, rising process. Um, 
So I like to give them uh, as gifts at frozen, right? I recommend that folks take it out of the freezer the night before they're gonna use them. Um, so on Christmas night, Christmas Eve, they would take them out of the freezer, put them in the refrigerator, and then Christmas morning, you let them out on the counter to rise for half an hour before you start baking. Um, and that will reactivate the rising process. Um, and they can be frozen. I wouldn't suggest for more than 14 days. Again, they are likely to lose that, uh, the elasticity and the gluten part that makes the yeast rise um, when you start to warm them up over 14 days. Um, so again, I usually do these at Christmas time, so I get cute little seasonal pans. Um, since we're doing this for Valentine's Day, I just flip them over and use that. Um, so what we'll do with this, um, you'll see the video portion with the frosting. So the little Ziploc bag goes here um, with the gift. And then I have little instruction note tags that I put on there so that people know how to, what temperature and how long to bake them. And then how to snip the Ziploc bag and squeeze the frosting on. That is it. Hi guys. Um, so it's been a couple of days since Trish and I um, made the cinnamon rolls. Well, actually, Trish made the cinnamon rolls, not me. Um, and she gave us a pan so that we could bake them and do a taste test. So we have preheated the oven and we set the um, cinnamon rolls in the pan on top of the stove um, just to let them sit there and rise. So we let them rise for about uh, 25 to 30 minutes. They can actually rise a little bit longer if you're doing something and can't get to them, but um, you don't want to leave them out too terribly long. Um, and so we are ready to put these in the oven right now. Um, we are going to have um, the recipe down in the show notes so that you guys can make these. Um, I am sure that this is going to be a recipe that you are going to want to keep in your recipes so that you can make. And they are a great gift to give to people. So let's pull the top off and see what our cinnamon rolls look like. So remember, these have, have risen. So they've been out of the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. And there they are. Oh, that yeasty smell oh they smell so good okay so we are going to put these in the oven you do not leave the top on them you put them in the oven not without the top on just like this um and we will put them in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes until they get a little brown on top just just ever so slightly we'll pull them out and we will put our icing on top Okay, let's see how our cinnamon rolls are doing. Oh my goodness. Look at that. They look beautiful. Okay, so now we are going to, let's first, Okay, so now we're gonna take this little bag of um, icing that Trish gave us, and we're just going to snip off this little corner here with our, scissors, our kitchen scissors. And then we can just take the, the icing and we can put it on top of each of the cinnamon rolls and it will melt because the cinnamon rolls, cinnamon rolls are very hot. Oh my gosh, they smell so good.
I don't want to waste any of this lovely icing. <laughs> Okay, guys, I think it's time for a taste test. Did somebody say taste test? <laughs> you get to try it. All right. Oh my gosh, it smells so good in here. Yeah, we've said it before. I wish there was such a thing as smell-o-vision because, man, it smells amazing. Look at that. You can see the cinnamon all mixed up in there nice real flaky crust oh uh, it smells nice. <laughs> so good it melts in your mouth yeah oh my gosh yeah would you ever know that there are potatoes in I there i would never i would have never guessed it Potatoes have any of you secret ingredient. have any of you guys ever made cinnamon rolls or bread with potatoes? Mm. You'll have to try this recipe. It is amazing. So I just wanted to give a big shout out to Dawn's best friend Trish for opening up her home to us and allowing us to share this awesome cinnamon bun recipe with you guys so thank you so much trish we greatly appreciate it but yeah if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up don't forget to hit that subscribe button it's free and it really helps our channel grow and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're up to date on all of our upcoming videos gardening season is right around the corner we've got some news for you guys about what we're going to do in our garden coming up this year so stand by and one of the best ways that you guys can help us is to share all of our videos on your social media platforms but thanks for watching guys i hope you liked it and we will see you on the next one bye the funny thing about uh, the cinnamon rolls about forgetting stuff usually i forget the salt that makes sense and then i'm like did i put it in did i not put it in what is it going to do without a teaspoon of salt